Hey everybody. I thought I'd do a <clears throat> quick video today just talking about drought and switchgrass. So it is the end of December here in Minnesota. Well, it's December uh, 22nd today. So getting to the end of December. And we had a just a, a once in a lifetime type drought this past summer. We didn't get much for rain from, well, we didn't get much for rain all summer until probably mid August. I mean, spring, we didn't get the rain we normally get. <clears throat> uh, June, July was bone dry. And finally about mid August, the rain turned on. But, but by that point, the switchgrass was pretty much done growing. So I wanted to talk drought and switchgrass. So for the most part, drought, Switchgrass is a fairly drought tolerant plant, but it is still susceptible to drought. So this is third year Shawnee. This should have been five to seven feet tall, and it's sitting anywhere from that. Well, so this is about five feet right here. So below it, I mean, it's folded a little bit or leaning a little bit. It's probably sitting anywhere from that four to five to six foot range. Now this is a very, very dry site. This is the top of a hill. You can see it slopes down into the bottom there. So this would be where the soil is the porous. <clears throat> so this actually still did pretty good for, for the soil being so poor. I mean, some of this stuff is at head level with me. I'm gonna straighten that out. It's getting pretty close. To, uh, to head high, but if I were to drop down into the bottom where the soil's a little better, <clears throat> you'll see that the, the switchgrass is taller. Now here you can see we've had probably 8 to 12 inches of snow so far this year, and you can see that this Shawnee is still standing tall and true. As I've said in other videos, I've planted Shawnee, Cave and Rock, and in the real world, Switchgrass. And the Shawnee is, just from what I've seen, has been have the best standability here in Minnesota. <clears throat> so here I'm down on the bottom, and now we're looking at five to six foot tall Switchgrass. So this is more of what it should have been up here. This stuff's over my head here. We're getting closer to six and a half feet tall. With this strand, so where the soil was good, it still uh, it still grew fairly well. But even on the upland, the hilltop where the soil is more gravelly and poor, it uh, it did better than I would have anticipated. And that's because if you ever look at warm season grasses, that root goes exceedingly deep. And if I were to compare this to the big blue stem in the area, the switchgrass did a lot better, or fared a lot better through the drought than the big blue stems. So it clearly is pretty darn drought tolerant. There's nothing grew this summer. And this stuff, I mean, it much, it, it did stress during the drought because it kicked out the seed head pretty early. <clears throat> um, just like, you know, when corn is stressed under drought, it'll tassel out earlier than it should. The same happened with the, the switchgrass. I noticed on the really dry sites, like we have one spot where it's pure gravel and I planted switchgrass and it grew, but that stuff only came up two to three feet and it was kicking the seed head out by, I mean, August 1st, I think. So, I mean, it, it does stress under drought, but it, it does pretty darn good. So I'll, sh I'll go show one more site. I'll show some second year stuff. And uh, actually, I'll show that third year cave and rock over there in the second year quick. And just so you can kind of compare the different, uh, different varieties. All right, so this is fourth year cave and rock. Now, this is a little taller, but this soil is very rich right here. I would say this is pretty comparable to that stuff that was on the bottom. Um, and last year, this stuff was pushing nine feet tall as third year cave and rock. 
And this year, I mean, we're looking again at that six to seven feet. So it's still, even with the good soil, there was there was some stress on it. Um, but here's, I mean, this is the thing I haven't liked about the cave-in rock is we haven't got a ton of snow, and this stuff just lodges way, way more. And this is switchgrass underneath here. it's all switchgrass but it lodges way more with the snow so we just have not been a big fan of it as compared to the Shawnee I am trying some new new seed this year I'm really really excited about um, I've been uh, following a guy named Roger Sampson he I think he knows switchgrass better than anybody but I've been talking with him a lot here this past year and he's got some pretty exciting new and improved type switchgrass that I'm going to try out. He's starting to post a lot more on the habitat forums and stuff like that. I think his group that he has on Facebook is Reap Canada. R-E-A-P, I believe. So feel free to check it out. But I'm going to try some of his stuff out this year. And I'm uh, excited to try it out. As, as habitat managers, we're always, always learning. And what he's telling me, he thinks he can beat anything I've ever planted. So as far as standability and he's got some stuff they've tested in the upper midwest that he's excited about so i'm excited about but yeah that's fourth year cave and rock did, did pretty good through the drought but not as tall as last year all right let's go check out one more spot all right so this is second year real world so this stuff is uh probably I'm looking at it. Now, I tried a different planting method here, a different strategy. I did lots of these little pockets. Instead of a thick stand of switch, you can kind of see the pockets scattered throughout here. I might thicken this up and add a little bit more switchgrass to it. But, uh, yeah, this stuff is anywhere from 2 feet to 4 feet tall, I would say, in the fourth year with the drought. Um... And it is a second year stand. So the other two stands were more established. Um, I'll compare it to, I got second, we'll do, I'll add a little bit more to the end of the video. I don't like getting too long, but I got second year shiny up on the hillside there. And that's poor soil. But I'll show what that stuff looks like compared to this. But I would say two to four feet tall. Um, this, this was not a great first year stand. And I'm not saying that this is a great um, comparison yet because... It just, it struggled a little bit in the first year. There was actually a lot of new switch because I did some prep work to try recover where the weeds took, the foxtail took over the first year. So there's a lot of switch that's actually under the snow um, that only got to 6 to 12 inches tall. And then that drought just really hammered it because it was that seed that just didn't get a chance the first year. That started to take off the second year, but then the, the drought was just ruthless. So... But I would say two to four feet tall for second year real world. Um, I think I can fully recover this area this year for what seed was planted. So next year I'll be able to give my my full uh, thoughts on real world switchgrass. But so far, I mean, it's it's standing all right to the snow. It tips over a little bit. You'll see I saw some lodging in. So look at clumps over there. Um, there was some lodging in it, but it does does pretty good we'll see what it does next year and i can share my full thoughts on the real world but i know a lot of guys love this stuff so i wanted to try it all right let's go look at second year shawnee and we'll call it good all right so this is the second year shawnee um i would say i'm looking at three to four feet of growth maybe yeah there's definitely some that's getting closer to five five feet tall um did pretty good through the drought. I mean, it definitely, again here, this is about pockets. You can see I got strips, pockets, all kinds of stuff going on. This is a big CRP field. Done a lot of work on. So I'm just trying to add some of these switchgrass pockets to add some structure out here to hopefully eventually encourage bedding. The g game plan with this area is to, I'm going to spray it one more time just to Hopefully knock out whatever remaining cool season grasses are in here, and then we'll burn it. And uh, I mean, I'm going to spray before the switch, 
germinate. So I'm going to hit it early spring. As soon as that cool season grass pops, I'm going to hit it with Roundup. And you got you to know what you're doing with that stuff because you can kill your switch if it's germinating. But I'm going to do that. We're going to burn it. And then we're going to call it good for a while here because I know there's still some switch that, like I said, I got stuff that grew six inches and then the drought just kind of stifled it. But I feel like I can, can recover it because this is only a second year stand. So I feel like some of that seed that sat dormant that didn't grow the first year just really struggled with the drought. Whereas the plants that were more well established um, did, did pretty good through the drought. But I will work on recovering this area this year. So the Shawnee's looking good. And as I, I mean, I compare these three different varieties, I'm not certainly saying that you have to plant one over the other. I'm always learning. I'm hoping this stuff that Roger is promoting is even better than the Shawnee. I mean, I've loved the Shawnee so far, but if Roger's stuff is better than the Shawnee, well then that's what I'll probably be planting moving forward. And I got lots of spots prepped for that this spring, so excited to try that out. So yeah, that's the uh, the switchgrass update for the year. All right, y'all take care. God bless.